Hi, I'm Debbie Cole. I'm a decorative painter and mixed media artist, and I've been the artistic consultant for Stampedius. And I'm here to show you some mixed media painting today. I began by using a wonderful creative palette, and I put different drops of paint on here and simply spread it over, and then put the paper on top. And this is what I got, and I've now allowed it to dry. And now what I want to do is come in and add some more paint. So I'm simply going to use our wonderful spreader. Now this is really for this is really for our embossing paste. But I think it's going to be fun to try to use. Now I want to make sure that I'm going to try a variety of colors, but I don't want to put complementary colors next to each other because they could turn to mud. So I just want to add a little bit more color, a little bit more fun to the whole design. I think this is a super fun use of this butter. I, I haven't tried using it with paint. This is going to be really cool. It's really fun. So I start off just as if I was um, using the paste and I just pull some down. Oh, that is really awesome, Deb. And if it's not moving for me, I can always use the Stampendous. <laughs> they have their own spritzers. And I still have lots of paint. And I'll just go back and forth and try pulling it in so it's not so streaky. She just put paint on this spreader and spreading it on the paper. Is that the most fun thing ever? So now we're going to, we're going to let that set up. Now, would you ever use the spreader to apply the paint to the creative palette and do it that way, maybe? We could do that, too. Like, instead of the brayer, you just use your spreader to apply it? I could try that. I wonder if it sticks. Oh, it's, it's sliding a little bit too much for that, so. Mm, okay, but interesting, but you can always I'm going to use it. what I have there because that's what makes mixed media so much fun. That's right. That's mixing the media there. Yes. Oh, I like that really well, and I like the way you brought the mm, paint down here. I do, too. Love that. Oh, my gosh, how fun. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to come in, and this is still fairly wet, especially because I just um, put the, the paint down there. So I'm going to use a dauber and add some more interest by creating some texture using our amazing Dreamweaver stamps. And I'm showing you stencils. over here, she's, she's using the creative palette as a palette. So when she's, when she's daubing her paint, she's adding it to the creative palette and then dabbing it off and off. Yes. I use the creative palette like I would um, a foam plate or paper palette. I like to use artist paper when I'm painting because then it's very green. So I use it whenever I'm painting and then all I have to do is wash it sure. and reuse it. So I just love it and it saves me a lot of money too. Awesome. So now I'm going to come in and I really need to really um, tape that down. But what I have found is I can use just a magnetic craft seat sheet and put a magnet underneath it. Oh, that's so smart. And then it holds it down, and so it won't bleed as easily underneath. We always get our smart new ideas from you, Debbie. So I'm going to just come in, and I'm not worried about making a beautiful stencil. I'm just trying to randomly create some patterns so you can see how I just stopped around. And then I still will lift like a book. And see how pretty that is with all those oh, colors so showing in. And I'll come back down over here. And I'm simply using, I'm using Decolard Americana, and I also need then, I could tell that my stencil was popped up, but now by moving my craft sheet, and it's just a magnetic craft sheet that I got at a, one of the store, craft stores, it really helps keep it down so I don't have to worry about it popping up and having it bleed underneath. And again, I come in very heavy on the outside edge, and then oh, that's so much pretty texture. I love that quatrefoil stencil. That is such a versatile, all styles. I know? agree. Yeah. And then I want to use the um, Andy Skinner stamps, but I need to make sure that this is dry here. And we're going to come in and just start adding some texture. And I really want to have a full range of values. So I'm going to just mix a little bit of black with the turquoise that's in here. Now I can use the same foam dauber 
I simply wipe it off and then I'm going to just mix it. It doesn't have to be exact. And so this is making just a really pretty grayish blue. And we want to point out that Debbie is using Americana paints by Deco Art. This is the preferred media for Debbie. And it's unusual to use Deco Art Americana with mixed media because um, there's they have their own fluid media. But what I have found is if you know how to control whatever media you're using, it works wonderful. And the Americana paints really are the most versatile. I don't think they're the most readily available. The, the, the fluid media is available in a lot of places, and it's great paint. We love it because you only need a little bit, but the deco art, if you're more familiar with it, you're going to have a more comfortable experience using what you've been used to using. And then you don't have additional expense either. Yeah, true. And you can spend all your money on these awesome new Awesome things, things, that's right. By Andy. <laughs> and I, well, and now that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, and it's a good thing that was cool. Uh-huh. But what I want you to see is how that is crackling. And I can say that the reason that wasn't stuck on there is I didn't press it down. But what I love so much about this crackle stamp is it eliminates the need for all the crackle mediums. I can just create the most wonderful texture and I can go right over and just add a little bit of aging. Well, and this is going to dry faster crackle. you got to wait for it to dry and see how it cracks. And if it's not how you want it, you do it again. And <laughs> This is just done. So I'm already getting some really interesting patterning then. Mm. And then also, with our creative palette, we have a circle creative palette, and we also have a rectangular creative palette. And with the circular creative palette, we, they come with these actual claim stamps that is very much like bubble wrap, but I like them even better. And this comes with the circular one, and these come with our rectangular uh, creative palette and they just cling so nicely so I thought it would be fun to come in and let's use some pink with this. Now another way that you can load your stamp is with a cosmetic sponge. It's very similar to the, to the daubers but you have to make sure that you get the high density ones because otherwise they squish a little bit too much and it's hard to control. Well, and I find the cheaper ones kind of crumble. They fall apart, you get little bits stuck in your paint, stuck on your palette, stuck in your art. And you also have to avoid the ones with the oils in it and vitamin E because they're so springy, yeah. they just mush and they won't hold up to applying paint. Well, and you don't want any of those oils on your rubber stamps. Those are all bad for rubber. Okay, so let's add some pretty pink in here. Oh, well, that didn't show up, and it must be because this is bubbling up. More paint. We'll try it again. Well, of course, the and best I'm going to put this about, underneath here. The best thing about mixed media is if you don't get what you intended, you still get something amazing. So you just go, oh, cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, from I sprayed it with water, and mm. I'm working on cardstock, so it just bubbled up a little bit. So we'll try this. There we go. Oh, lovely. We'll zoom in really quick on that so you can see that texture. So this is going to be a really pretty bright palette too. This is really fun. Each layer just adds a little bit of more fun, more interest, more texture, more color. I'm going to with the, um, so I'm going to slide this down and just add a little bit more pink. And that's going to help move those pretty pink around. Then we have these lovely new bird stamps. And again, this is a, our new Jumbo Bird stamp, so I thought it would be fun to have him sneak in and peek around the painting, too. Super fun. So I'm going to put him in in black so we can really see him. And again, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the... I'm making sure that the 
cosmetic sponge is loaded so that it actually looks like a stamp pad. So you can use any type of paint that you want. You just don't want to have so much, to see how it's shiny? You don't want that much paint on it. You want to load it and then offload it so it's very dull. And then I can come in and very quickly, and I'm only going to load half of him because I just want him to peek in here and there. I'm going to try putting him up over here. And I keep sliding the mat around because that helps with the paper being puckered. Okay. And with the element of design, it really does help to do things three times. So I'll put him one more time. I'll just put him down right over here. Just so you barely see him. Chances are we're going to cover him up anyway. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you our wonderful stencil that comes with our jumbo stamps. So now Debbie's making flesh tones, and we've got our stencil in place on the artwork. Okay, I think that's going to be a pretty flesh tone. What I have here is the mask that comes with our jumbo stamps. All of our jumbo stamps, stamps come with stencils, and that's what this is, it's a stencil, and then it also comes with masks. I have left the paint on it rather than cleaning it because they're transparent. I easily lose them. So uh, what I'm going to do is just put it into place and hold it. I could tape it down, but I find it just as easy to hold it. And even over the hair, I'm going to go ahead and just do all flesh tone. Because then when I stamp, I'll come in and pull in the, the hair. So what's really fun is I can come in and just use my cosmetic sponge and with the stencil, go right over all of this texture. See now, if it was tipped down, it wouldn't be popping up. So I can lift that. We're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I want to come in and I want to age this a little bit because this is going to have this cute little new stamp by Andy Skinner on there. Um, this is a series and um, I love all these little vintage signs that he has. So I want to age this and I'm going to use, first I'm going to use this stamp and I'm going to just use my hand and um, use a little bit of raw sienna and this is just scratches and grunge that he created so much fun I just love it and so what this will do is I'll stamp it off, off of here it's just going to help age it just a little bit and I'm doing this before I actually put the label on it the vintage label. Then I'm going to come in with our wonderful crackle stamp and I'll use a darker color probably. The black will be work fine for this. And you can see how that just really aged it, just by adding that little bit of crackle. Okay, and then I'll come in with some more black and load up the stamp. And 
Sophie and I were saying yesterday that everything French looks old. <laughs> For some reason, if you put it in French, it just looks vintage. I agree. <laughs> and I also like to take their, they sell the Dreamweaver stamps. What I can do is just take a little bit of the black, just go around the outside edge, and that's going to help frame it just a little bit, age it a little bit more. Now, I'm not too concerned that I can't see the image real crispy because I just want it to be vintage -y and old looking and it might look worn away. And this is a little bit bright pink, but it's going to tie in with the girl. And then what I would do is decoupage that down. Now I think it's time we can go back to this to the girl. Now for the decoupaging, you would use the deco page or the fluid medium, or what would you? You can to use it? either of those. Those are both wonderful, and I do prefer the um, matte of both. That ultra matte. Um, it's about the ultra matte medium or matte medium, and then they either have matte paper for the um, decoupage, yes. or they have just plain matte right. for the deco decoupage mediums. Um, but they both work wonderfully. Okay. Good. And then what I want to do is I've taped these together and I'm going to untape them really quick. Can you stop it? Thank you. Sure. Back in the focus where I want it to. What color hair do you want to have? Pink? I like hair or I like a regular color with a pink stripe I think is fun to do like a brown hair with one pink stripe like people would put in their hair. I think I'll just do all pink. All pink is lovely. Like I loved her blue. Okay. It was beautiful. Okay so this goes like and then I'm going to show them what I'm going to do with this. Let me put a little piece of tape on here. In addition to the stencils, the stamps, the jumbo stamps come with mask. So you can see, had I not put in the flesh color, I could easily just go in and mask that in. But now I'm going to redo what I call reverse masking, where I'm going to simply put her face down where it belongs. Can you stop it, Laura? Uh -huh. Okay, done the flesh tone. So what I'm going to do now is I just put the face into position and then I can also come around now and put my stencil back in and I can sponge in whatever color hair I would like. Let me just tuck this little piece of tape underneath. Okay, so I do have a little piece of tape that's under there. And so hopefully that's going to hold in a position for me. And I'm going to come in with some pink and give her some really pretty pink hair. <laughs> yeah, especially when you have a blue yeah. background and you're going to do pink hair. You want yeah, that, well, I don't mind that. That peach underneath really helps uh, make it a little... So you can see we have the face and the hair, and it's scooted around a little bit, but that's going to be perfect. So we're going to let that dry, in. and as that's drying, I want to add a little bit more interest. So I'm going to come in, and to add the, the theme of the birds, I'm going to add a really pretty little feather here. And that feather comes with the lady face. And it comes with her, along with a really pretty flower. So while Debbie's adding the feather, I'm just going to quick throw in the, the whole face set with its template and stamp and the feather and a flower is called The Look. 
and then um, and it's one of our uh, cling rubber stamp sets. The set that she used from Andy with the um, crackle and scratchy backgrounds is part of the Toxic set. It's one of the new uh, cling sets from Andy Skinner. And then the uh, French phrases is a whole set called Shabby Chic, and it's a whole bunch of French vintage label uh, artwork that he's used. And then, of course, we have our uh, creative palette, and the quatrefoil stencil is the one that she used at the beginning. So that way you'll have the product list. And, and there'll be a list at the end of this video that you can um, click to the products on our website. Well, I'm glad you did that and took up that time to, to show that <laughs> Let things <all>. dry. Because <laughs> it's, really, it's really hard to remember all the titles of oh, the yeah. sets because they're such lovely sets, and I can tell you which individual element. And I, the, I noticed that the feather didn't show up that well, so what I'm, and I really wanted it to be yellow. So I'm going to restamp it with black. Then once it dries, I'll come in and fill it in with some yellow. And that oh, just showed up nice. so much better. It was, just, it was just a little bit too opaque. Okay, so now she's nice and dry. And we're going to load her with black. And so you can see, step, step by step, I'm coming in. And first I base coated it um, with the flesh tone. And then I came in and added the hair. So there's many steps to the layers here. And so then I'm going to come in. And I'm going to simply use our black. Now a lot of people get worried if it's on the inside. That's so deep. And what's so wonderful about these jumbo rubber stamps is you don't have to worry about that. That will not show. And then I'm going to come in and just try to align her. And this is a little tricky. So what I try to do then is see where her face is. I do. I'll get my little face right down there by the table. You can see it in there. And I think it's better to just look and see where the hair is, but sure. I can always touch her up a little bit. The nice thing about mixed media, it can always be fixed. Or changed. Or any or paint. Covered or up any with something else. Painting. Okay. So I didn't put enough paint on there, but that's fine. Because I can always come in with a liner brush. So what I'll do now is come in with my liner brush. Or with a round brush. And I'm just going to pull a few streaks. And this is really fun to do. Let's pull a little bit of white with it. And what we try to think of when we teach this is think about that you're brushing her hair with your paintbrush. So you're going to go the direction that you would go if you were brushing her hair. It, it makes it a more natural line. And we say that with colored pencils, too. You think of your brushing the hair. And the, and the one thing I, I like to do is to do some short ones and then some long sure, ones. Sure, because everybody has short ones and long and ones. And it adds variation. Yep. Make sure that you curve them. Because if you don't curve them, she's going to look like she's kind of ticked off. <laughs> um, or that she's really having a bad day. It really keeps the hair soft by Unless making Unless that's the look you're going for. Because sometimes you're having a bad day and that's what you want to art about. Really is. <laughs> and I like to come in and just add a little bit more. Extend it, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this over here, too. Well, and all of these faces that Fran has lend themselves to you designing the hair. And so you can add bows or ribbons or flowers or butterflies or small creatures. or I'm going to show you really quick this great one while she's painting here. She did this one of our beautiful braid. She's added little little dots along it to make it just a little fun, happy texture on there. And I love the blue look. She's added an earring with a jewel. So these faces are really designed so that you can make your friends or or just have fun and free up your art. Absolutely. It's so much fun. So what I'll do then is I'm going to come in here where, and I'm really glad that this happened, where you can see then it's no big deal if, you, if the stamp doesn't um, go the right direction, you just can come back in with some of the tones. And I kind of like having a little bit of pink underneath there. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. much fun. And I like some of the texture sh showing through. That's really a lot of fun. Well, I can see I just made her neck a little bit wider. I'll put that back in with pinks. <laughs> okay, and so then what I'm going to do is just come in with a liner brush now and add some black. Now, if you can't handle using a liner brush, 
Let this dry all the way and you can use a marker. You can easily use one of these amazing markers by um, um, Faber, -Castell. Faber Castell and they have a variety of sizes and when it dries, as a matter of fact, I, um, I'll show you how I can go in on the face right now with that because the hair needs to set up a little bit anyway. So I would use it extra small and there's many times that I come in and have somehow either it's stamped over or painted over the image and it's just so easy to go back in and just follow the lines that were originally there and clean them up a little bit. And we used to be in the thought that if it didn't work when you stamped it, it was ruined and you had to throw it away. And that's just crazy. Any way that any tool you can use to fix it and make it look how you want is is legal. It's okay, ladies. Absolutely. Leap in there. Take a second chance. Take a third chance. <laughs> now, when you're when you're using a liner brush, it's very important that you thin your paint uh, because, especially the Americanas, they're so rich and thick. So I'm just thinning it. Just getting it very watery here. Yes, I'm making it almost like an ink-like consistency. Oh, that makes sense. And so then I'm going to just start pulling. And Debbie's the liner brush queen, so don't feel bad if you can't do this the first time because I've seen her paint with one hair and she makes it look like it's, you know, well, walk in the park. Like I said, you can easily do this with your markers. And if that you are going to use a marker, then go ahead and let it dry first. But I love this pink with the black and oh, it's white. It's fantastic. I it think really it's is. just so awesome. She's so pretty. But you can see how the black just really is just setting her apart. And I love the white you added. That it, it just adds that pop. Really nice. It's just something really sexy about black and mm -hmm. pink and white, especially the hotter pink. Like, don't you just want to do your hair pink? I really want to. I'm scared, but I want to do it. Now I really want to. <laughs> We're blue. I think this We're blue. Fun. I love that blue one too. Yes. Okay. And so long as I have the black, I'm going to just give her some really pretty pupil too. Nice. That makes her look make, look a little bit prettier. Nice. Then I'll fill in her lip. You can use a marker or you can use paint. And for those of you who are afraid to use paint, they have aqua markers out there where you just add the water right into the marker and then it just makes it so easy to use. And I can show you right now, um, this is starting to dry, so I can just go ahead and add these lines like this with a marker. And very easy to do. But it's not going to hurt you to learn to use brushes, ladies. It's good for no. you. But what's really important is you, the paint has to dry, otherwise you'll ruin your marker. So I think that it's just really a fun project that we've created. So much and fun. I think maybe she needs a little bit of blush and then she's done. And what I love is the Dreamweaver, the really small Dreamweaver the blue one. Uh, mm -hmm. um, stencil brushes. What I'll do is I'll take the pink, load it with paint, and then you take almost all of it out. And this is called dry brushing. This is a technique that I'm very well known for. But it's wonderful for just rouging the cheeks. And you can see there's hardly any paint in here at all. And see how that just softly gives her a little bit of a blush. And then if it looks a little bit too harsh, you can just go around the outside edge with the original flesh tone color and it just softens it right up and makes her all pretty. So that was just a really fun way to create mixed media using stencils and stamps. I hope you will check out all the jumbo stamp, stamps that have the stencils and masks right in them, and then our wonderful Dreamweaver stencils, and have fun creating, because creating brings you joy. Thank you, Debbie. <coughs>